What's up YouTube? Redbeard's Garage and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be building a brand new editing rig with a Ryzen 7 processor. So it's been uh, long awaited, but I've needed a new computer for quite a while. I've been messing with a ASUS ROG gaming laptop. Uh, it's been a really good laptop, but unfortunately I'm going to start doing 4K next year and it's going to take a lot more computing power to uh, you know, edit those videos. So I uh, went with a complete new build and I can use the, the ASUS laptop as you know, an editing rig to travel with. So the laptop came standard with a Core i7. Uh, that is running at about 2.6 gigahertz. I upgraded it to 16 gigs of RAM. It has a 480 gig SSD as well as a two terabyte media drive that I installed in the disk drive bay. For graphics, the laptop has a GeForce GTX 960M, two gig of GDDR5 graphics card, and that was plenty of power for the last three or four years that I've owned it, but you can really see its age now with, uh, with the video clips that I've done. If I reverse a video file and run it backwards, it kind of lags it up a little bit so we can't have any of that so here's our new build for the processor we're going with the amd ryzen 1700x this is an eight core processor with 16 threads so it's going to be a huge upgrade over our i7 that was four cores and eight threads to go with that we're going with the geforce gtx 1060 i was going to go with the 1080 but this was a two thousand dollar budget computer build and the 1080 was about double the price of the 1060. The 1060 I went with is a three gig card and it is factory overclocked. To go with everything, we're doing 32 gigs of DDR4 2400 megahertz uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM. This is gonna be crazy in video editing, having 32 gigs of RAM. And also we're putting all of that onto a ROG Strike motherboard. This is a motherboard by ASUS. It has RGB lighting control, has USB 3.1, USB 3.0, has everything that I needed and it was only about a $120 board. I seen no reason in paying more for a, you know, like a $200 motherboard. This has everything I'll need. To keep that processor nice and cool because everybody knows that AMD runs hotter than Intel. So we're gonna use a Noctua 140 millimeter dual fan cooler. This thing is massive and I know people's gonna ask me why I didn't go with a uh, all-in-one water cooler. The reason why is Linus Tech Tips did extensive testing on this cooler against every air cooler that's uh, you know in the top range as well as liquid coolers and this actually outperformed every one of them and you don't have to worry about the rare occasion of a water pump stop working and then your CPU could fry. Even if both of these Noctua fans went out it would still dissipate enough heat off of the CPU that you could still run everything at full speed. For storage we're going with a Samsung Evo 850 SSD. We went with a 500 gigabyte one and we will be upgrading later to uh, multiple hard drives, but at first we're going with a Seagate Barracuda four terabyte hard drive. I do want to do a RAID with four four terabytes, so I'll have a total of eight terabyte of memory uh, of storage mirroring each other. And we went with a budget CX850M Corsair power supply. This was a refurbished power supply, so I got it for 50 bucks. I could have went with a gold or a platinum uh, certification, but this is a bronze and I've had really good luck with them. So I'm perfectly fine with using this 850. 850 is complete overkill. I could have went with a 500, but uh, 500 watt. But this was only 60 bucks refurbished and it comes with a one year warranty. So I went with that. The power supply is also semi-modular, uh, which I like because I don't use Molex in any of my computers. So I don't have to plug up those uh, Molex and hide them behind the motherboard tray. For cooling, we're going with four of Corsair's AF120 red LED fans. We're going to do three in the front, one in the back, and then we'll, of course, have our two 140 uh, Noctua fans on our CPU cooler. So this thing should stay nice and cool. And uh, we're also going to be upgrading to a 32-inch LG. This is a 60 hertz monitor. I know people are going to say, why didn't you get a 140? Why didn't you get 4K? Uh, this was only $200, and I don't game at all. So 60 hertz is perfect for what I'm doing. I just wanted a little bit more real estate, so I'll be running a 32 inch as well as a 24 inch monitor. I will be upgrading later to a 1060 graphics card as well as two 4K, uh, probably TVs, because the monitors are really high. And as I said, I don't game 
um, but this should be an awesome build. We have two strips of uh, RGB lighting we can put in the top and bottom of our case. And going on to our case, we went with the Corsair Carbide 270R case. Good budget case. This case was right around 80. I think it was actually around 70. But it has a nice side window, has the power supply cover. Really nice. It has no optical drive bays in the front because I don't use any disc and uh, just looks a lot cleaner having nothing on the front. So uh, we got a couple wall mounts as well to put the monitors on the wall. So I'm going to tear this stuff apart and get everything installed. So we're going to start by removing the stock retention modules on the motherboard. We have to replace these with these metal ones so the Noctua cooler will bolt up to the motherboard. We are leaving the backing plate that's on the back of the motherboard. So all we're doing is taking out these four Phillips head screws. Be careful not to slip and scratch your motherboard because that would be no good. Just two Phillips head screws on each uh, retention module. It comes with these spacers. We're gonna set down on each of those little threaded studs. Now we can take and lay these on like so. Easy does it, easy. We have these long Phillips heads that come with it to uh, thread it all down in place. Now you don't want to crank these down, but you don't want to leave them all willy-nilly. It came with this little screwdriver too, by the way. Handy little thing. I had a coffee this morning, so I'm a little jittery. So now we can go ahead and socket the processor. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, why aren't you grounded? As long as you touch metal, you're fine. I've built computers for six years now and never had a problem. And you don't want to be wearing socks on carpet. That would be dumb, putting computer parts in. So you'll notice a little gold triangle on the CPU right there on the corner. And there is also a little triangle printed on this little piece of plastic on the motherboard socket. You just lay the processor in it and shut down the hinge. That thing is locked in place. You can see how organized we are here at Red Deer's Garage. Piles of uh, computer junk. Okay, now we got our DDR4 Vengeance RAM. So how we're gonna install this is you slide in one side. Come on, baby. And you push down firmly. You'll hear both sides click. This is always the most satisfying part is sliding in the RAM. Now we have all four slots populated with DDR4 2400 megahertz uh, sticks that are eight gigs. So that's 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM should be super fast. So next we need to put some thermal paste on the processor. We're gonna do about a pea size spot on the center of the processor. It's good that Noctua gives you a pretty good amount of this so you could install this cooler probably six or seven times with the amount of thermal paste they give you so i'm going to look at which way the fan wire is oriented so i'm going to put it on where the fan wire is pointing up there we go not to it has the 70th looking fans i've ever seen but they're the best fans on the market for computers take our protective cover all kinds of dust on that thing. Look at the heat pipes. This thing's a son of a gun right here. So now, it's gonna be easy. And line it all up. Go ahead and get that threaded on. Okay, we're gonna switch out to a real screwdriver. Okay, so we got a, a real man screwdriver. So what we're gonna do is go back and forth on these because these are spring loaded. Then one or two turns per side. Until she's tightened down. You don't wanna, you know, really horse crank this thing down. But get her good and snug. Bam. That looks pretty sweet. 
if I do say so myself. Then we can slide this fan back down in there. These are sometimes a son of a gun. Make sure the fan is level on each side. Then we can take our other fan, which I think I may put it over top of the ram. The fan's air direction is always towards the the back little braces for the in, the motor. But these do come with the low noise adapters. Um, we'll see how loud they are. Like that, look at that thing. Look at it. So freaking huge. <laughs> Whew. I mean, that fills out a computer so much more than a liquid cooler, in my opinion. Some people would be like, no, bro, you need to go liquid cooler all the way. But this outperforms it, so. I mean, if you did a custom loop, it'd be different, but we're not messing with that for sure. So you always want to test boot your system outside of the box. You can hook your power supply up to the motherboard just to make sure everything's working before you install it on the case. I've did that a few times. I've always been so anxious to build these things. I love building computers that I throw everything in the case, go to boot it and something be wrong. Whether it's a stick of RAM is messed up or uh, I've had one CPU right out of the box be bad. I've had several motherboards, but that was normally budget $60 MSI motherboard. So this should be pretty good. What I'm gonna do is hook it up to my 32 inch LG that I had got to go with this whole nice setup. And we can kind of tell how loud the fans are gonna be like that. So we can see if we need to put those uh, low, low noise adapters on. And I'm just gonna be hooking up the 24 pin and the eight pin to the motherboard. This is probably gonna be a two part series, um, one of this actual build and you see it boot up and then I can show my actual setup uh, inside the, the house. Still on my keyboard and mouse from my, my little workbench computer setup. A little cheap USB wireless uh, keyboard and mouse. So you can see we are in the BIOS, um, just making sure it, it posted and everything. Seems like everything is looking pretty good. So now everything's looking good with all of our RAMs uh, registering. Our CPU, it looks like everything's working fine. So now we can go ahead and install all this inside that 270R case. So you've seen that we uh, our test boot was successful. So now we can start. Oh, we can start removing these factory fans. I never have locked to any cases factory fans normally. So we got to pull out the two 120 millimeters, the one in the rear, and a red LED one. I think a red LED one in the front because we're going all Corsair fans. Oh, got that Corsair fan out right there. So with these front covers. You just, I hate always taking these things off. I'm afraid I'm gonna break them. You just gotta be a man about it. And just grab it and pull. I had broken before though. Oh gosh. Don't like it. Oh. All right. Had the grill. This is a little, that's quality. Had this little stick on dust grill come off. I'm gonna stick that puppy right back on there. There's that little red LED fan. I do wish these fans had rubber feet on them so there wouldn't be no vibration noise, but let's hope that doesn't happen. So you can see I got the fans all installed, oriented to blow in. So I got three intake fans, one exhaust fan. Uh, I don't like doing the top fans. I don't know why I never have. Um, probably should have in this case. I probably should have put, you know, like two 140 or two 120s up top. But this has worked perfectly fine for me in the past. So that's the way I'm doing it this time. So now we can pop this cover back on. Now, since our motherboard has uh, successfully booted, what is this? It's presents and birthday presents. Oh, that was the case. Sure. Need those. 
So now I'm gonna lay the foam that came with the uh, monitor up here to protect my case from getting all scratched up. So next we need to throw in the IO shield. And these just pops in from the inside. So we've got that IO shield installed. Now we're gonna slide our motherboard in. Make sure to be careful on this process because you do not want to scratch up the back of your motherboard. We got that seated down on there. Now we can use our crusty screwdriver and put in all of our motherboard mounting screws. Now we're gonna install the power supply. Get it all oriented in there and then slap the screws in it. So I went with these cable extensions for the power supply because this wasn't a fully modular power supply and I wanted it to have that nice clean look. So these simply plug on to your original cables and then you're gonna see this part get plugged into the motherboard. So I've just been plugging up stuff, then the boring junk. I tell you, that cord up there, the 8-pin CPU connector, sucked. One thing was two of the prongs, like two of these prongs was still attached together. They didn't cut it all the way, so I had to take a little blade and cut that, and then I had to feed it back through there. It sucked, but it's done. Now I can continue on wiring up everything, throwing the graphics card in, and uh, we can get closer to seeing this thing boot. guys let me know what you think of this build in the description below uh, pretty pumped I've been using it for about a week or so now and I love it the video will be up probably next Wednesday on uh, me mounting the screens inside and I'll show you kind of my setup in there it's not the greatest setup in the world but it'll do for now I know people's gonna gripe about certain things I did but future upgrades for this computer is a 1080 graphics card and I'll use that 1060 in my garage computer um, so I can always, any parts I'm taking out of it, which that should be the only part actually, I can use in this garage computer. So 1080 later, I'm also, this week I'm buying two, 500, uh, two more of those Samsung Evo drives, two more 500 gig hard drives to throw in there and I can use one of them. Uh, basically when you're editing videos with Premiere, of course you have your main, my main 500 gig SSD with the operating system and Adobe installed on it. Then you want a secondary drive so you can let Adobe use that as a as a cache dumping disk, you know, just a scratch disk. And um, then also you can have a third drive that you would put all your video files on and that's gonna speed up things significantly because it's not reading and writing off the same disk. So you'll get a huge performance gain. But this was a $2,000 computer build, so that's what I got. And now I'm gonna spend another 300 and buy two more 500 gig SSDs. I am gonna go with the M.21 terabyte later on down the road, but right now the speed's super fast. I know an M.2 would be even faster, but right now, like I said, $2,000 budget.
I do have up on the screen right now some Cinebench and, and junk uh, popping up my scores. And I did overclock it to 3.9 gigahertz. I didn't mess with the, uh, I'm running the RAM at 2400 megahertz. Uh, runs awesome and I love it. Let me know what you think of the computer. Of course, in the comment section below, tell me what you would have changed and uh, just what you thought about it in general. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for helping us grow. Make sure to share these videos, like and subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Redbeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts, and when making your purchase, use the Redbeard discount code in the upper right-hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Help support our channel with some merch by going to rbgcarts.com. We have shirts, stickers, and hats, and we're adding new designs all the time. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.